Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I take an image that I colored with crayon onto fabric from a previous video, which I'll link below, and how I slow stitch it, how I add different elements to it, buttons and trinkets and so forth, to make a beautiful fabric page. I love being able to use these crayon colored images because I, I can customize that image. I can make it whatever theme or color I like. Now you can find beautiful fabric that have images that you want to use as well. So this technique for stitching onto a fabric page will work for that. But if you want to create your own hand-drawn image of a beautiful summer watermelon, be sure to check out my video on how I do that. From there, I take that finished result and I do my stitching. Let me show you how I do it. So in a previous video, I showed you how I colored this image, this watermelon scene here, with crayons onto fabric. And I'll link that video as well. And I also showed you some examples of how I slow stitch onto my pieces and I can add them to my fabric books. And that's what I tend to do with them. Some people use them for quilting as well. But let me show you the process that I use for creating this fabric book page. It's a lengthy process to create the fabric books made from images like this, but it's an enjoyable one, and that's why I like to do it. So I start out in this particular book, I have a piece of quilted cotton here, and this just gives me a good substrate for my pages. I've already folded it in half so that I'll stitch on this side, and this side I'll leave blank, and it opens up. I only want to use half of this to decorate. I already created a seam allowance here for my binding, and I don't want to stitch through both sides of this, just the one side. So I have my image, which is going to be my main focal point, and I'll create a line here to indicate that fold. But for now, I'll just fold it in half and show you my thought process for creating the design and then finally stitching it down. I take my focal point, in this case the watermelon, and I want to pick up on the colors and the shapes coming from here. So to that end, I have some beautiful fabric. I have some greens from the rind, some pinks and reds for the flesh. And then I have some accessories. I can use beads or shells. I like to use buttons too. So I have some green small buttons, some red larger buttons, and I even have some white buttons. My background tends to be, in this book, off-white. So these white really pop. And I may or may not use these buttons, but I like to start out with an assortment of things. I also have some beautiful lace, because I like making a fabric collage first. So I have this lace that I'll put down with my collage, and then I embellish it with all my stitching. I also have some lace little parts here that well, I might use these as well. We'll see how it goes. And sometimes during the process of creating this layout, I might remember that I have something else and I'll add it in to my work. But for now, this is my basis where I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna remove all my little accessories since they go on last. And right now, I just wanna start with the fabric collage. So I'll put some pins in here to mark the end of the page just so that I don't run over those. And now I'll start designing. And so I'll speed this along so you can get an understanding of how I try out the images and audition all the pieces. I start by cutting my focal point to the shape that I want, and I can modify it further. I like to use the lace because it adds a little bit of texture to my piece. Since I like to overlap shapes, I don't mind leaving a little extra of the background fabric. So here I have like a basis of my collage shapes. I'm going to trim up some of the edging here, and this gives me a nice basis for using some of my other accessories. It's just interest that I can add to my piece. 
and I also have the buttons to play with. So right now I'll pin everything down and I'll start stitching down the layers. Starting with this big piece of lace and this green piece of fabric. I like how it shows this little edge and it gives me little spaces here. This will be covered by the binding of the book, but it gives me a little space to work with. I can even move this over just a little bit so this is somewhat off center. These are like the little final touches that I add to the piece, trim up any of the wonky edges. So I'll pin this into place and tack all this down with just a few stitches. And then I can come back and decide what else I want to do. So I attached all the pieces down just with a running stitch and I used either pearl cotton to match the background or I used two strands of embroidery floss to match the colors of the pieces. And I originally had planned to put the pink here, but I didn't like the way it looked. It was too repetitive, but not in the way that I liked. I wanted a little more texture. I already have the texture from this and the texture from this. So I stitched just with a single strand of floss this together just to make a longer piece. And now I'm going to take that same single strand with a knot in it, and I'm just going to stitch just a little ruffle. So I'll just keep going over and under. And then I have a little ruffle. Depending on how tight I pull it, I can have it just a little tuft, but I just want it to have a little dimension. And I kind of like the height of the piece. And I think just that little added ruffle is quite nice. So I'll just stitch this down. I'll, st I'll put a little stitch in between each of these little ruffles and that will give me some texture. I also want to add a little texture to my design here. The beauty of working with crayon is you can stitch right through it, unlike say acrylic paint that's thick. So I think I'm just going to really focus on this image in the forefront here. I'll stitch around the edge here of the rind of the watermelon here, make it nice and dark green, and then I'll stitch the seeds with one thread of floss. And we can come back and start adding embellishments like the buttons and maybe additional stitches. So I stitched around the bottom of the watermelon and just half of those watermelon seeds. I don't want to really make it stand out too much. Just be indicative of the watermelon. So now I have this beautiful canvas to work on to add some more stitches and some embellishments. I have a bunch of buttons, reds and greens, but I think I'm just going to use the white. I have quite a bit of red going on here. I'll see if I want to add more. And I can add these buttons I happen to like them because the little opening is indicative of watermelon seeds. And then I have space here and here. I think maybe I'll stitch just maybe a concentric teardrop shape like a watermelon seed. And then over here I can leave it alone or maybe I'll just do some stitches in this arc pattern. I'll stitch these down and trace out my teardrop and my arc and then come back and sew those together. So I attached the buttons. I love how that looks. I think it just brightens it up. And I was thinking of putting in some French knots, but then I remembered I had this little piece of lace I was considering using. And I like how that kind of follows the arc and continues the eye around. So I think I'll just stitch that down with some of this pearl. So originally I thought I would stitch a teardrop shape here, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I'll just leave the seeds here and here. I think I'll just stitch some lines um, using that same color here. Just running stitch of lines. So I have six strands of embroidery floss that matches my background and it'll just make a little bit of texture. The lines don't have to be perfect. I just want them to look hand stitched. So I can just do a running stitch gather up my fabric and just run it along. See how this looks. Yeah, I like that. 
I'll continue doing that, filling in this area with just lines of various lengths, up and down to add a little texture, and then we'll come and take a look at the result. So there we have the finished result. I have texture throughout the piece here with the lace, the little lace part here, this little mobile trim, the texture I stitched there. It's very subtle and I like that. I like these colors to really pop. I like that this edge is turned under and it has a little bit of give. I like those textured and interactive fabric manipulations on my work. So I'm really quite pleased with how this came out. That's how I take a crayon drawing and add it to my fabric books. I make it the focus of the page and then I just work around it, adding little bits of stitches here and there. And I can continue with this further, but I really like this one. So that's how I slow stitch or hand stitch the image as my focal point that I've already colored in. I'll use ribbons and trim and fabric, beads and buttons, and it really brings that page to life. It's a fabric collage, it's hand stitching, mixed media, and it's very fun. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.